Welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here, please click the subscribe and bell buttons to be notified when new videos are uploaded. And like, comment, and also share the videos with your friends and family. Now, we don't use sugarcane bagasse as fuel as the locomotive anymore. We use a blend of wood and coal. The wood that we use comes from a sustainable source, a tree that's commonly called a mild tree here in Barbados, otherwise known as the Caparina tree. It's one of the few species of trees that you can cut down today and burn tomorrow. There is no drying time required. The other fuel source is coal. There's not much I can tell you about coal, but it gives a lot of heat. Now Barbados had a railway, and it's illustrated on this map. If you don't know this already, Barbados Railway ran for 56 years. It consisted of 24 miles of track, 98 bridges, 10 train stations and the steepest gradient ever built on any railway in the world. The railway was initially built to haul sugar, but a new industry was emerging on the island when the railway opened in the 1880s, an industry we're too dependent on today, of course, tourism. The most popular train on the schedule was called the Sunday Excursion, and that was the one day everybody was off. And what better thing to do than catch the train to the east coast of Barbados? Now there were three classes of passengers on the railway. If you were cheap like me, or if you just didn't have it, you bought the least expensive ticket available, and that would have been of course in third class at the back of the train. If you had a few more pennies to rub together, you'd sit in the middle here, and this would have been second class. And as you can guess, the most expensive part of the train was at the front, uh, first class. If you cast your minds back a few, well, say 160, 170 years ago, imagine a Barbados without paved roads. Now, I know these paved roads aren't exactly the best, but imagine an island with no paved roads, no railway, no highways. Can you imagine what it was like to get from Bridgetown to Belle Plaine, having to walk for days in the hot sun? When the railway opened in the 1880s, it transformed that journey into less than two hours. So the train would leave Bridgetown for Fairchild Street. Fairchild Street today is a bus terminal, but 160 years ago, that was the Bridgetown terminus of the Barbados General Railway. And anybody who was somebody would put on their Sunday best to catch the train to the East Coast. We crossed the Constitution River twice, we would head east up through Welchers, My Lord's Hill, Station Hill, the Bell, on our journey east across the south of the island. The train would then make its way past a few of the train stations, and I'm going to name some of them. Buckley, Windsor, Carrington, Sunbury, Bushy Park, Three Houses. Of course, these weren't only train stations, these were also sugar factories. So what they did to save time and money is they put the train stations inside the sugar factory yards. At the time it made sense, most people lived and worked near the sugar factories in these areas. So the trains could haul sugar during crop season, and without having to do too much changes, they'd be hauling passenger trains out of crop season. In fact, they had something called uh, siding. If you see, there's a track on the side of our train, which allowed one train to pass another. So there were more than one train running on the line at each time. Anyhow, our excursion train arrives at Three Houses train station, and we turn north towards Concept Point. Now this may seem strange to some of you, but most Barbadians did, had never even been to the East Coast in the 1880s. It's too far to walk, days of walking. So many of them are full of excitement and anticipation as we approach the East Coast. We leave the sugar factories and the sugar cane behind us, and we arrive at Concept Point, but we have a problem, a major hurdle ahead of us. Concept Point is about 150 feet above sea level and we need to get down to the village of Bath, which is at sea level. It took four years to build and it was the largest engineering project which has ever been undertaken in Barbados. Ladies and gentlemen, the train was suddenly plunged down into what was at the time the steepest piece of railway ever built. So the train is now going, now going down through this 80 foot deep cutting, down this very steep hill, and finally we emerge out of the darkness and into the village of Bath. We are now on the east coast. From here, the train ride was, is pretty self-explanatory. You all were just looking at it the entire 
coastline along the East Coast was the railway. Now why do people want to come to the East Coast? Well, in the Victorian era, people view things differently than we do today. People were coming to get better health. They called these hotels along the East Coast health resorts. The Roundhouse Restaurant and Inn, the Atlantis Inn, the Edgewater Inn, the Beachfront Hotel. Further south, the Crane Railway Hotel. It was called a railway hotel because the Crane had their own train station. And the infamous Sam Lawrence Castle. These are the types of places that most people would want to stay. The West Coast, on the other hand, you may be wondering, well, what about the West Coast? Today we call it our Platinum Coast. Not so 160 years ago, the West Coast was condemned as a disease-infested swamp. Not the type of place you'd want to spend your holiday. You could catch malaria, yellow fever, and it could very well be your last holiday you ever take. So if you were smart, you came to the East Coast. Anyhow, our train journey then continues north along the East Coast. Bath, Martin, Bay, Tampa, Bathsheba, Cattle, Washington. Finally, we round Chalky Mount, and we arrive at our destination at Bell Plain. 24 miles later, 98 bridges. Bell Plain had a turntable like the one we have here. They turn the engine around on the turntable so that the train is now pointed in the correct direction to go back to Bridgetown. Now this is where things would get interesting. The train would retrace its route south along the coast. Until we got back to the village of Bath, everything had been going so well. Now, for those of you who are paying attention to my story, you know we went down the dreaded concept today. Well, guess what? We don't have to climb back up the steepest railway yet built. You can hear the locomotive at the front of the train struggling with the heavy weight. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Or chug, 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 Oh boy. Just like our buses today, if the train was too full, it couldn't make it up to the concept cutting. Now in 1881, there were no cell phones, there were no roads, there's no cars, there's no rescue train. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we going to get back to Bridgetown? We're stuck on the hill. Any suggestions? Let me see Clara Glass, they keep a lot of noise. Let me see. Clara Glass, how are we getting back to Bridgetown? I got more. Thank you. This is the heaviest part of the train which contains the most hands, and we all know what the good book says. Many hands make. Like yes, please. So, it's fantastic. Third class says they're going to help us for second class. What can you do to help us? Is there anything you can do maybe to help third class? Anything at all? <laughs> this lady is so nice. She says she can get out and help push you push the train. But of course, that's not what happened. Second class would get out and watch them push. <laughs> now, I know it seems mean, but actually, it was a way of helping. It made the train much lighter and easier to push. You all here complaining? You hear complaining? As usual, it's coming from the booty section. First class, I think I heard one of you say that they should really push the train a little faster, right? Yeah. Second too long. And another thing, your throat's look hard. What about a complimentary beverage? Champagne? Oh, even better. There you go. So champagne for first class while we push the train up the hill. This is unfair, isn't it, right, third class? Anyway, once the train got to the top of the hill, the driver would stop the train and the conductor would usually make sure that the passengers that helped push the train got something to drink. So there was a little something for everybody. Now, how many of you have ever caught a bus in Barbados? Anyone ever catch a bus? Of course, third class. First class, maybe, maybe once on a tour. That don't count. <laughs> Let me ask another silly question. Do you have to use bus stops in Barbados? I like these diplomatic answers, not really, depends on the bus, do you should use them. Well guess where that started? Correct, that's the way you stop the bus. So where do you think that started? Correct, of course. Barbados had the trains, and we had a unique way of catching the train. In fact, Barbados was one of the first countries to have a call stop. This is how the call stop would work. You'd walk up to the side of the track, you'd wait for the train to approach, Look, here comes the Bridgetown train. What do I need to do next? Slide down the train. Once you had the driver's attention, he was obliged to pick you up. Now there's a difference between the buses today and the trains of yesterday, and it all has to do with brakes. The driver would try to slow the train down as best he could, and they had something called running boards. So the train ain't stopping is what I mean to say. 
you would run alongside the train and you'd jump onto the running board like this and grab hold for dear life. And that, of course, is where the expression catching a train comes from. Now, if you didn't have enough money to pay for your ticket, of course, the conductor is looking for his, his fare. Which brings me to the next point, how you got off the train. If you wanted to get off the train, of course, just like the buses today, you let the conductor know that you want to get out or knock on the side or whatever it is that they do. And they would try to slow the train down and you could jump right back out. So today's mini bus culture actually did start on our trains a hundred and something years ago. Anyway, the railway ran until 1937, which brings me to the end of my little history speech. The railway was closed in 1937. Now, there was no public buses yet. In fact, there were no buses really yet. Can you imagine if you lived in St. Andrew, St. Joseph, St. John, St. Philip, and all of a sudden your connection to Bridgetown has been closed? It was devastating. It would take another 30 years for public transportation to return to the east coast of Barbados. Anyway, that's my history of the railway. I hope you enjoyed it. If not, just enjoy the train ride. All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is not the end of your tour. The next stop is the St. Nicholas Abbey Great House. Now it's not just the house. We have the museum, we have the distillery, and my favorite part, the rum tasting. So I hope you all can enjoy that for me. Is your name the one? Michael. Michael, Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All aboard! <laughs>